Hello everyone, NadLabs here. Today we're going to be making a whack-a-mole type game in the Godot game engine. This is version 3.2. It says it right here, 3.2 stable. And let's get started. We're going to start off by making a game scene. Like usual, we're going to have a no 2D. We're also going to have a Godot mole house. The reason I called it a Godot mole house it will become apparent throughout the video, but just stick with me with this naming convention. We're also going to have a tile map to make the walls our Godot moles will not be able to be seen through or we'll just have walls right so what you're going to do is you're going to go over here it's most likely going to be empty for you you're just going to click new tile set i already have a tile set drag on over the icon.png which, which is the default godot image and you're just going to create new single tile and drag over here and i can even do that for you you're just going to drag over and you're that's it you made a new tile and if i go over here you'll see there's new two new tiles and they don't really differ in what they do because there's no collision shape attached. They're just sprites. Uh, they just follow the rules that the tile map lays out. And if you're wondering why I don't have the same color as uh, represented over here, the light blue Godot icon is because I went to the modulate area and I actually brought down the modulation to make it uh, to allow myself or to allow anyone to see the difference between the walls and any other objects. We also have a score label and there are no fonts attached to it because I always keep in mind the end viewer and I want to make sure that if you have no font files it's okay you can still follow the tutorial anyway so just lay out your scene in any way you want and then you will be able to follow along with making the Godot mole so for the Godot mole all you want to have is a area 2d followed by a sprite collision shape 2d right the regular when you're making a area 2d but you're also going to want to have a tween which is a special node right uh, I'll just show you here tween you can search it up and you also want to have a timer which is a regular node not as special as tween so in the Godot mole script we're going to be learning about a couple things today we're going to learn how to control tweens timers and more importantly signals which actually gave me a headache for a little bit of time I'm a little embarrassed to admit that but whatever so we're going to make a signal called update score right simple enough it updates the score label that we have over here but we're going to connect the signal in the ready function we're also going to have declarations to our tween and timer so we can reference them in case the name changes. We're going to have a bonk height or um, and the reason I called it bonk is like the hit height or whatever you want to call it. And that's basically how high your mole, your Godot mole will go up after being hit. I already came prepared this time with a black background. So that's amazing. And what bonk height basically means is what well, if this is the mole hiding underneath the platform, right? I'm assuming you know how whack-a-mole works. Really simple game. You can just YouTube it, Google it, DuckDuckGo it, whatever, if you don't know. And the bonk height basically means how high the mole will go above the hidden area. That's all it means. And you can set it to whatever number you want. I just set it as 50 because the sprite image or the icon.png is traditionally 64 by 64. And if you do 1.8 times 64, you'll get, uh, you'll get 48. But I rounded up to 50 because I don't want the Godot, the mole to go all the way up. I just want it to go a bit up. And leave a little bit hidden to give that uh, effect of like popping out of the ground. So that's why I made it 50. Anyway, so the ease value will be used for the lerp function. The higher this value, the quicker the mole will move. The lower the value, the slower it will move. And that's all I have to say for that. And we're going to have a bunch of variables. And the most important variable here is this initial position. Because it took me such a long time to figure out why this the code I wrote wasn't working. Whenever we spawn this or make this. Godot mole, we're going to do a couple things on the ready function. We're going to make sure that the initial position is set to the global position. And what does this mean? It means that this variable will hold the, loca the location of the mole. If you're wondering what that means, it's, I'll try explaining it. Wherever this go this mole, Godot mole starts out, it will make note of that position and we'll make sure we use it later. That's all it does. We're also going to connect our signal, update score, which we will emit whenever we want to update our score, right? Self-explanatory. We're going to connect it to our parent and we're going to get our parent by simply doing the function get parent. And we're going to call the method score update. Don't worry if you don't know what score update is because we will be talking about talking about that very soon. Then we're also going to randomize and that basically means that Godot will it'll randomize the seed of the random number generator within the Godot engine itself. And that's it for the ready function. To get the on timer timeout function, it would be most beneficial if you went to your timer node went from the inspector to the node and you click timeout, double clicked on timeout and click connect. Or you could go from the timeout signal and click connect over there, doesn't matter. And once you get it, you're going to want to make sure that there's a random chance of a mole hopping out of its hole. 
or Godobo hopping out of its hole. And you and there are many ways to do this. I just thought of this on the fly and I love doing it with random numbers. So we're going to say a random integer, which we defined up there, equal to a rand i brackets. Rand i is actually a function in Godot, and if we go and we search up rand i in the uh, search help, which is just on the top right, we can see that it returns an unsigned, unsigned, so not a negative, a positive uh, integer. And we can actually control the range of integers by using the percentage sign followed by the number we want. Now, note that whatever this number is, it's just minus, subtract one from that, and that will be your range of numbers, starting from zero. If you want to start from one, just do plus one. I didn't want to put a plus one for whatever reason. And I just said 11 instead of instead of 10 plus one, but you can do uh, whatever you want. If uh, the random integer is greater than five, so every time this timer is timed out, it will make, it will get a new random integer. If that random integer is greater than five and hittable, this Boolean value is false, we're going to move our mole up and we're going to set, uh, set hittable equal to true. Oops. What does that mean? That means that Let's say uh, the random integer is six, right? It's greater than five and hittable is equal to false by default. So we will move it up and let's say our player clicks on it or after a certain period of time, the mole goes back down. When it goes back down, it will automatically be setting hittable equal to false. What is hittable? I keep saying hittable. Hittable is a Boolean value, which basically indicates if we are allowed to hit it or not. If you've ever played whack-a-mole, you know you can't hit the mole when it's hidden in its uh, hole or whatever. You have to be able to hit the mole when it's above the ground. If it's above the ground, we'll say the hittable state is equal to true. If it's below, it's false. And that's just an example of thinking from first principles again. And what I'm trying to really hit at is that you can think about things from first principles. You can just say that if it's above the ground, it's hittable. And that's true. If it's below the ground, then it's false. It's uh, The hittable state is false. Sorry for going on a little tangent over there. Conversely, we're going to say the opposite. If the random integer is less than a certain value, let's say the same value, and hittable is equal to true, then we're going to set hittable equal to false because we want it to go down where it's not hittable. And that's where we move, move it down. Now, I'll explain the move up and down functions, but I just want to explain one thing before that. We, we want to make sure we get the input from the player. And there's a really special way that we have to do that. We have to go to our project settings, input map, and get uh, set a function called click or whatever you want, uh, an action called click, sorry. And I set it to a mouse button click. You can do whatever you want, controller, keyboard, I don't care. And you want to make sure you have a couple things in place. So if the event dot is action press, click, right? If the, if the player clicks the mouse button, this will return true. And the mouse in variable is equal to true as well as hittable is equal to true. The reason we have this over here is for a couple of reasons. We want to make sure that the player is able to hit a mole that is above ground. That's why we're checking if this is true. If we didn't check hittable equal to true, then whenever we try to hit the mouse, uh, if we ever tried to hit the Godot mole, when we click, we would be able to hit it here because we're not checking if it's hittable. And we're also going to make sure mouse in is equal to true. And I'll just show you what happens if we don't check if that's equal to true. All right, let me just copy all this. Control X. If we don't check if the mouse is inside that mole, we can just go like this and get rid of every single mole, regardless if I'm touching it. And you can see the score keeps going up. So that's why we have to make sure that this mouse in is equal to true. But what's mouse in? If we go over here to our node, our, our Godot mole area 2D node, we can see that there's a collision object on mouse entered and exit. On those two functions, we're just going to say if the mouse is inside of the area 2D, which is defined, and the area 2D shape is defined by the collision shape, if it's inside of that, set mouse in equal to true. If it's outside, set it equal to false. And I just want to make another thing clear. The way that this line works is that if every single condition is true, then this block or this area of code is executed. If any one of these is false, then nothing is executed. And the reason we have these in brackets is we want to, we actually don't need it in brackets, but yeah, we actually don't need it in brackets. Well, whatever. Now I can go back up and explain the move up and move down functions. The way we're going to be moving the Godot mole is through the tween function. Now the tween function is designed to be able to move one property of a node at a time. Now I'll just show you what I mean by property. If you go to any, anything, any node, you'll see that it has a bunch of these things on the side. If we go over here, property is visible. 
if we go over here, position, property. And those are just properties and it'll be able to allow us to uh, change the value of that, of the property in question. Now, the, how do we set up a tween? We're going to get reference to our tween, right? If we, if I, excuse me, if I go up here, right? We get a reference to our tween up here. I'll just double, show, I'll just double check and show you that tween is a node. We're getting reference to it and we're just going to call it tween over here. If I scroll down here to our move up function, you can see that tween, right? The same tween that I showed you over there with the arrows. That's the same tween dot interpolate property. So the way interpolate property works is that it takes in a bunch of arguments and produces the result as long as you know what you're doing. So let's get right into it. I copy pasted the code that was in the documentation for reference. The first property is an object. What's well, an object? The self. Our self is an object. These are objects. But we want to make sure that we move the Godot mole as a whole, as an entirety. We don't want to move the sprite because if we do, then we won't be moving the collision shape. And you'd obviously understand why we don't want to move any of these because that doesn't make any sense. We want to make sure we move the entire thing all at once. So tween.interplay property, ourself, the property, node path. The reason we have to put it in quotations is because it's uh, we're getting the, the property itself. We're not getting reference to its value. And we'll be doing that in the next one. Uh, I should just make note that the arguments are all separated by comma. I just want to make that clear in case uh, you're new to Godot. After the second comma, we have the initial value, which is a variant because it doesn't, because the docs don't know that you're going to be moving a position or color value or whatever. They just know that you're going to be moving something. And so the initial value is variant. And that just means we can put in a vector two over here, comma, position minus vector two, zero comma bonk height. And this basically means that whatever the position is, the final value will be position minus a certain value. And if you think minus goes downwards, I just want to take a moment to remind you that in Godot, that in Godot, in the, indicated by the light blue color, upwards is negative. And that's why we're subtracting. Downwards is positive. In real life, indicated by the white L, downwards is usually negative and pos um, upwards is usually positive. Anyway, I just wanted to make that clear. We're going to use a duration or um, how long it will last in seconds. A trans type, which is just uh, if you don't know how I got transcubic, you can just go tween dot and it'll show you a bunch of trans. If you do that, I'll show you a bunch of them. I did cubic because that means a cubic graph. You can do, um, it's actually defined if you click tween dot transition type. Oh, there we go. If you go to the transition type over here, you can actually see all of it. And if you go over here to the enum transition type, you can actually see uh, what effect it will give you. And then we're also going to be having ease type. And just do ease out. Ease out basically means that the animation will slow down as it comes to its end. And that's all. And we're going to have a delay of zero seconds. We want this to happen exactly when the mole is expected to move. So I'll just get rid of this. And that was that. That was the entire tween function. But if you do this by itself, nothing happens. You have to do tween.start. And that's why I was a little frustrated with this node because I did not know that and that was really annoying. So that's all you have to do and you want to make sure that if you if you want this is completely optional you can do timer.start and that basically restarts the timer so the mole will have a random chance of moving back down if the player didn't hit it to increase the difficulty. You can leave it there or not whatever you want and the move down function is going to be almost exactly the same except for the fact that for the final value we're going to have the initial position. And that's important because if we did not have the initial position and rather we did something like this, I'll just show you guys and gals. If we did something like this, position plus, and I ran the game, you get this really funky behavior where, there we go, uh, the actual node goes one block too deep. I'll show you what that means in paint. If this was our mole over here and we, let's say we hit it and we, if we passed in this argument instead, it would actually go down over here. And because, as like I said up here, this is super complex AI, right? Random numbers. It will just go up here like this like this. I'll just keep uh, fluctuating between here and I'll never be able to go up here because it's just hidden behind blocks. And that's why we want to have set it back to the initial position, which is set at the beginning of the game where each Godot mole is hidden behind a tile map block. Uh, I didn't explain time that's start for the move down function. When the mole is back down here, you want to make sure that the timer starts again, because if it doesn't start, then the mole will never have the random number uh, check occurring it'll never be able to move up right because it will keep on checking here but hittable isn't equal to true because it only gets it only becomes true if it's above ground and stays stuck here hidden from the player forever if you do not say timer.start 
This this one is mandatory. This one is optional. At the beginning of the explanation of the script, I said I'll explain what the hell's happening over here. And this took me some time. I'm a bear submitted, but I will. We're going to be connecting this signal, right? This signal over here. If you're wondering how I'm getting the underline wherever I'm putting my mouse, it's because I'm holding down the control button and I'll just hovering over the text. It shows me wherever the text is used. So this uh, connects a uh, signal is going to be connected to our parent at the start of the frame and we're going to call the updates uh, score update method every time this signal is emitted so when would we want to emit emit the signal if we think from first principles we can easily understand that we want to emit the signal whenever the player clicks on a mole specifically and that's why if we go down here we can actually see emit signal update score now this signal is emitted in the godot game engine or the godot game and it tr and it goes over here into our parent which actually, if you look at it, all these, this is why I said we need a Godot mole house, because all these nodes are children being housed inside this parent. That sounds a little weird, but all these children are being housed inside of this node. And since these children nodes have this node as their parent, we can just reduce our time and effort and we can just connect it, the signal over here. And the score update function, we would just think from first principles how, we'd want, how we would want to update the score, right? The score variable, which starts at zero, score plus equals one if you don't know what this means it just means score is equal to score plus one if you're if you ever looked at math or any sort of uh, algebra you know that this doesn't make sense because score cannot equal score plus itself but the right side of the um, equal sign is always evaluated before the left side uh, the right side is what is assigned to the left so score plus one is going to be zero plus one so one and that's going to be equal to the score and we're going to set the score label dot text which we're going to get reference to by saying score label equal get parent dot go, dot get node. So this parent to these children actually has a parent itself, which is the game scene. The game scene will get this node and we will be able to modify the text property. If you didn't see it, uh, property is a, uh, sorry, text is a property. So then we will be able to update the score by converting the score integer to a string. And that's about it. If we click run, we're not getting any errors. And I'm able to hit my uh, Godot moles. Oops, I missed that actually. And yeah, that's it. This is actually kind of fun. And one thing I forgot actually, just when I was saying that, is that when we move down, we want to make sure. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying this now. But when we move down, we're going to make a couple. We're going to change a couple things to the collision shape on our Godot mole. When the mole is above ground, we're going to say that the collision shape dot disable, which is a property of the collision shape itself, we're going to say that this property is equal to false because we want to be able to hit the Godot mole. Right? That makes sense. That's from first principles. If it's above ground, make sure that it's uh, able to check for collisions. If it's below ground, make sure it's not able to check for collisions. Because let's say a player gets cheeky and starts tapping over here. Then it's just going to keep going down, 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 down. And that doesn't look nice. And I can actually show you if I go like this. If I get rid of the uh, collision shapes, and I actually enable collision shapes for this, you can see if I just tap in the right spot, or no. But there are uh, circumstances where if you double click on it fast enough, you'll actually be able to move the Godot, uh, the mole, down past a certain point and i actually can't show it here but if you keep trying it will actually go down and down like this mole over here so you just want to make sure you set those uh collision shapes to disable okay anyway thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please 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 put them in the comments i will respond to them give me a couple days i will respond to your questions comments because I will respond to them because if you do not understand something, it's imperative that I help you understand it or you get someone to help you understand because it's just amazing if you're able to create something with your own hands and I'm just trying to show you how to make it. And yeah, that's about it. Like, like I said, please, if you have any questions, just comment them and that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.